Speaking of expansion, the Sun Belt. Now, the commissioner, Keith Gill, he said that they are exploring all opportunities and are not ruling out further expansion as Old Dominion and three others join. Uh, that would be Marshall and James Madison and Southern Miss are the other schools here. Uh, this article by David Hall over at the Virginian Pilot. And he said, uh, Old Dominion and three other schools are less than a month into their memberships into the Sun Belt. And if the right candidates become available, they, they might not be the newest members for long. Now, Keith Gill said Tuesday that the 14 school league potentially could grow to as many as 20 programs, although he's comfortable with its current iteration. Here's the quote. I don't think we're actively looking to expand. I think we feel good about our membership and where it is, but I don't think we'll take anything off the table and we're exploring all opportunities. And so if there's a really good institution that makes sense for us, that's like-minded, that's in our geographic footprint, and that brings value to the Sun Belt, we would certainly be open to having conversations with those schools and adding. Now, those are very interesting keys right there. Really good institution that makes sense for us, that is like-minded in our geographic footprint and brings value to the Sun Belt. Well, the geographic footprint of the Sun Belt has been expanded since the last go-round. Uh, you want to look at a map here, you can see that this is, I mean, it's full. At Georgia State, Troy, South Alabama, all the way down to Louisiana, and then you move on up, and you move into Marshall, which is in West Virginia. Uh, you've got Arkansas State. So you basically, you're talking the entire Southeast. Now, who would make sense in that spot? Uh, the Sun Belt did announce expanded media rights with ESPN, right? For the second straight year, Sun Belt Conference Commissioner Keith Gill announced during his annual State of the Conference address uh, that the conference has expanded its media rights deal with ESPN. The new agreement, which still runs through the 2030 and 31 academic year, will provide the Sun Belt with additional financial resources, exposure, and linear opportunities for Sun Belt football and basketball. Now, it expands upon the extended ESPN media rights relationship that was announced last year. It results in a more than 50% increase in the number of Sun Belt football games that appeared in ESPN's linear offerings, which is ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU, including 40% of those new opportunities televised on a Saturday. So these are not just weeknight games, etc., uh, ESPN understands exactly how big this conference can get, how big the matchups are. You have good football schools in the Sun Belt. But if he's talking about more expansion, uh, one, uh, the rumor number, because they didn't release the number for what the deal actually is, but it looks like these schools are getting paid like $2 million a year, somewhere around there. Uh, if ESPN wanted to up that even to $5 million a year, like, it, it would be worth it because it, while they don't have monster ratings all the time, you do get insanely good matchups and you get good regional rivalries, right? Uh, there's there's a lot to like about what you're getting from the Sun Belt here. If they were going to expand with anybody, I don't think that any of the AA schools, uh, AAC schools are looking to move backwards because they're already making quite a bit, and I'm not sure what the next TV deal will be. Mike Oresco will figure out. Whatever. I don't imagine they will lose a ton of money from losing Cincy, Houston, and UCF. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll jump back to about the same price that the Sun Belt is. And if that is the case, uh, that's going to be a big problem. But regardless, the runs that I've got down here that would make sense as far as other conferences, etc., you've got the MAC schools, of course. You, you got Kent State, you got Bowling Green, you got Miami of Ohio, you got Ohio, whatever. Um, you also have, if you look at it, Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee State, maybe Louisiana Tech, uh, somewhere along there. Like uh, you, you have schools in this footprint that would make sense, right? I don't know that any of them make sense right now. Like FAU is in Florida. The Sun Belt doesn't really have a presence in Florida. If if they didn't take, uh, if FAU has gone over to the AAC, would FIU, would Florida International down in Miami, would they make sense to go to the Sun Belt? I mean, their program has really not given a crap at all. Like, the administration just does not support them. And maybe they'll start with the new coach, but eh, 
it, it's it's kind of slim pip, uh, pickings at this point, really. Uh, if you if you sit down and really start looking at this, um, I don't know. I'm I'm very very curious where we end up going as far as conference expansion in the Sun Belt. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.